So, uh, good morning, gentlemen. So let's start with the presentation of the better platform and let's start with the ar architecture to get a better overall um, idea of what actually makes a platform. I do distinguish two parts of components, the core parts and the tool parts. And on the top middle, you can see the EHR server, which is actually the core component which handles all the clinical data and gives all the API and services. It exposes all the API and services, works together with an identity server, which we are using our open source solution Keycloak. And besides it are a couple of optional components like demographic server, terminology server, and resource store. Down below is a set of tools, and I uh, distinguish them in two parts, is the design time tools and the runtime tools. And they help with data modeling, AQL design, form design, and presenting other components um, with some other functionalities. Now, the piece that's missing here is the task planning or the task planning components, but we'll spend some time with them a bit later. So to put all in perspective, anything yellow here is, are, is the stuff that the hosts provide. So if you install our platform and your site, the yellow parts are what you take care of. On the far left, we have any sort of identity management system proxied by our identity server to the EHR server, which contains all the clinical data. Now, you see there's a, pre here presented are the interactions between the components and to the far right, the APIs in ways how to interact with them. Now, there's a couple of them grayed out because we're expecting the rollout in the um, near future but you can see that the platform is almost every component has some sort of an API either administ for administration or for accessing the functionality. Far right on the as a client the presented is your app that you're trying to build. Now, just to have a short introduction in the EHR server component, the core component. On the top, we have APIs, different APIs, SOAP API, REST, JSON, Pure API, or HTTP remoting. In the middle, everything according to the open air service specifications and all the caching, indexing, security related things, auditing and events is performed by the actual, our actual implementation. Now the persistent part, persistence part is, falls onto the hosting side because you provide the database up to your choosing and the integration runs in a couple of ways. We do support, we can act as an IGXDS repository. We do interact through fire interfaces, HL7, V2 messages, and we can also uh, collect data from consumer devices using Bluetooth. Uh, on the other side, we do have uh, push events uh, responding to incoming data and also other conditions. Now, the deployment of the better platform, or let's focus on the EHR server, it can be run as a single instance or in a clustered setup. Uh, within, the, within a cluster, the caching and indexing layers, which are the most important that take care of the performance, are um, automatically synchronized through the network. The whole setup is completely stateless and in part of the persistence, um, so you need to take care of the any hot swap configurations, either using Rack, Data Guard, or similar. But we do offer also replication and sharding options across the nodes. <clears throat> now the APIs, as I mentioned earlier, majority of components have some sort of APIs, and the EHR server APIs support 100% of the functionalities of Open Air REST API specification and more. What I like to say is that our APIs are developers friendly. Um, from the document formats, we do support TDD, open air format, and additional flat and structured web, de web template document format, which is quite close to simplified data template. Um, the OS, OS operating systems that we support is a Windows Server and a couple of Linux flavors and everything is running on Java 8 or 11 since a couple last versions. Now, database support, we do support any major modern provider. So from Oracle to Azure SQL Server, you don't need to worry about that. We do not rely on any specific features of any of them. So there's an ample choice for you. Now, the platform dashboard um, is a backend, which has a graphical user interface 
and allows you to manage the entities and have a heartbeat of the components, but it's completely covered with the API. So all the functionalities are in the administrative API and you can manage the platform completely remotely. Regarding administration, um, all components are config file based. So exporting or copying the configuration parameters is easy, it's a simple file copy operation. Now, you can run multiple instances of the platform on the same network because EHR server runs locally independent. As a web app, it's connected to a single database instance. Other components connect to a specific EHR server. And you see we've established a relationship, one database, um, EHR server, and components to the EHR server. Clusters have unique cluster IDs, and each cluster shares a single database. So even Parallel clusters can run on the same networks and same virtualization environment. Now, different versions of the same system within the same instance can run if the only version um, difference is in the patch part of the versioning. So 2.4.x, all of these versions can run on top of the same database because we guarantee there's no breaking changes. Mixed minor versions, so 2.3 whatever and 2.4 whatever, cannot coexist sharing a database. Now, we do a major or minor release once a year and we do support it for two years at the moment, so I guess there's ample time to upgrade your systems and be prepared. Now, down downtime is necessary only when upgrading for new major minor releases. Uh, patch releases require, require no downtime when you have when you are running in a, a multi-node setup. You can do a rolled uh, upgrade. Typical downtimes last from 30 seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on the hardware. Uh, anyway, each upgrade comes documented with instructions so you can prepare in advance and your downtime is minimized. For the virtualization, there's no limitations. I mean, even more, one of the most, the largest uh, production system running in Moscow is running in virtual, virtualized environment, and it takes care of 9 million patients, 24,000 doctors, and half a million entries daily, 1 billion documents per year. No hiccups there, so we're quite confident. Now, just to take uh, into account smaller systems, we do have a, a sizing um, a sizing guide, uh, but it all depends on the number of users, type of traffic, and what kind of application you want to support. For instance, a pediatrics hospital here in Ljubljana with 220 beds and the ICU unit, a thousand users, first two lines depict the hardware used, and the EHR server has two nodes with four cores and eight gigabytes of RAM. Database has the same, but single node, uh, one for backup, and what we reach are the uh, times marked in yellow. What we also learned from stress testing is that adding a third node in this configuration increased performance by roughly 30%. So, depends on your own setup, but you can do a, an, a rough estimate what needs to be done. And of course, we take, take into account the file size increase uh, during the year according to the traffic. We can help you with that, and I can share this document with whoever is interested. Now, the SDT support, um, I can only say that simplified data template is partially designed following better web template idea. And we do support the, uh, the whole concept in either flat or structured format. We do not follow the AQL part design, but we do follow the template names. So the fields are named, identified by the template location. Let's put it like that. So yes, SDT, fully com fully compliant with the idea. Um, what else? Regarding the security, we have a role-based access and we do support typical user roles. So administration, we have super user roles, uh, domain administration roles, and roles according to the type of activity, uh, which allows you to either have access to the data and what kind of access. Can you create EHRs? Can you just read data? Can you write data? And so on. Also managing different assets like templates, forms, users, or queries is separate. So you can set up um, uh, uh, um, detailed um, access configuration for your users. Regarding the authentication, we do support OpenID Connect and Auth2 tokens. We also 
support basic authentication, which makes development time much easier. And as I said earlier, dash access to the dashboard is um, controlled by basic authentication, but can be shut off completely or restricted to local access only for maximum security. Now, all better platforms create their own detailed local logs, but they do post these logs to a central component called the auditor, where the logs are assembled, parsed, and transformed into database entries for easier access. So you can, you can actually browse your logs through SQL queries. But logs can also be output in XML files, compress log files with more details. They can be stored on an Aetna server or in a log stash for your Kibana or output to a message queue. Depends on what. Right. So I'm here on behalf of, of course, the, the other every healthcare organization. And uh, a bit of a first, a kind of an aspect of what we are doing, and then we are going to go to the EHR models and how they're connected. So kind of what we are doing overall is that we have this uh, comprehensive portfolio of the model of healthcare light solutions. And that contains both the healthcare and the welfare side. And in there, we're using uh, the open EHR as a backbone. And of, of course, in this case, you know, we have the better platform as our backbone. And then in top of that, we have a lot of different services and functional models and, and partner solutions. And then if we are first, before we go to the actual modules, if we're first looking at the simplified way that how they are connected and what is actually a module here, is that we're utilizing the platform's capabilities with the REST and with these events last triggers that they mentioned already. And uh, in the model side itself, it's a web applications and uh, the architecture that we are following there is that we are following the microservices and event and data driven architectures. Those are things that actually enables our models to be decoupled from, from the main system and they could be injected to any other system. So it, it eases up that integration thing. But yeah, you, somebody's saying something or? Oh, no, no problem, go on. Yeah, okay. And uh, of course, in the background, we're also using the designer tools uh, and, and some like runtime functionalities like the ETLs for, for reporting side and, and such. But then if we check the, the module side itself, uh, here we have this um, kind of a, in a core center, we have the OpenHR platform for the better, but then we have numerous different modules that we are, we have attached to it. And then of course, in addition to these, uh, there are some others, but these are some that we have in production or we are building currently. And, and also some of these modules even contain sub modules like the maternity and the childhood care here, to which we're going to focus a bit more since that is uh, one of the uh, good examples of products that is a CE labeled and, and follows kind of all the regulative matters on that area. So for the demonstration, we're going to focus on this growth chart, which is under the childhood care. And I have a uh, pre-selected a patient in our system and then I have here the growth chart application open. And you can see some graphs here and all of this data that is visible here is, is in open EHR format and, and fetched via the REST APIs. And uh, we have possibilities in this model, for example, to min a bit, um, check uh, the data in a bit more stricter format. And if we want, uh, we can even check um, let's say if I put that from zero to 20 year old comparison for this patient, and now we have the BMI checked here. It's using these um, BMI reference values that are actually rather new from, from Dunkel. And then we have possibilities that if, if this patient was a prematurely born child, then we could go and check for the like from zero to two year old and check the gestational age correction. But in this particular case, we know that this patient has not been like prematurely born. So this kind of setup is, is not necessary, but as you can see, there's a lot of different kind of calculations and automatic formulas done 
to the client, which enables uh, clinicians to, to focus on their work and get actual support from, from the module itself. Uh, then we have possibilities to check the data in table format, edit if we would like, um, check summary pages where we have a summary of the current stages and also get some alerts from based on different formulas. Like here we can see that for this particular case we have an increase in growth um, after a bit over five year old and, and a similar increase has been noted in, in, in a small amount of children and also some herd growth change alerts. And then we have the paper, uh, we have kind of the information about a bit of a more static format in which we have the birth status of the child that what was the height and weight and then some information about the, about the parents that what were their heights. So all in all, if you can see that there's quite a lot of different uh, calculation logic built on top of uh, the actual data and, and the UI representation. And that, those are all kind of things that are the things that have to be regulated quite thoroughly and that's why we also have the, the certificates about these regulative matters that we have posted previously on the, on the documents. But all in all kind of the regulative matters depend quite a lot based on on the actual module. So when applicable we have like more in, in force of those and, and when they are not needed that much then they are not there. Um, sure, shortly that was that was my side of the of the modular part of this presentation and I hope now that Andras is back in line and we can continue with the demonstration from, from his his side. So we have seen the logging, nothing to add. Regarding the trainings, we met on some of the trainings. So we have different tiers of our partner development program where we uh, include the training for different profiles from administrators uh, up to developers and technicians. Other products might offer other specific trainings, but we are also dealing, our support team deals with the technical questions and also helps with shaping the content and content related, solving content related dilemmas. Uh, the partners uh, receive all of technical documentation, which has all the features covered and detailed information about everything you can achieve with the platform. But we also offer a couple of user-oriented documents, which describe the typical scenarios with um, detailed uh, requests, API calls, and ample examples of how to use that. We're also expanding our online presence with more theme-based tutorials, such as data migration, and others in a short while. So please bear with us for a couple of weeks more. Uh, now we do provide a Java service library covering most of the API functionality. We do not offer other SDKs, but since everything is API driven on a quite granular level, I believe there shouldn't be much complications developing or using the APIs. Now let's talk about Fire. Our demographic server um, stores data internally in Fire happy structures. It offers Fire and the REST API, both for storing and reading data, and also accepts HL7 v2 ADT messages. So demographics offers a, a lot of possibilities. Now, on the clinical data side, uh, we do have a Fire Mapper component, which acts as a acts as a facade for the open air data, and we do provide the interopen Fire Care Connect profiles mapping rules that allows you to query the data through the FHIR interface and get the data from the Open Air repository as FHIR resources. Uh, there's a list of the resources we do cover at the moment. Demographics are fixed and the clinical data for read only. We do provide these, um, these uh, mapping rules, but you can expand that. We have full documentation on the process, so all you have to do is provide a mapping set and other resources are then surfaced on the FHIR API. Regarding the task planning, we do support full open air task planning specification on two levels. The modeling, where we use our archetype designer tool for textual and visual editing of the work plans. And then we have a module called cockpit, which allows you the execution overview over the patient's data. And I believe it's time for a short demo. So first of all, I would like to show you the archetype designer that 
um, allows you to prepare, modify work plans or task plans. And um, well, let's not talk too much. I'll show you directly on a case of handling pneumonia. We have the pneumonia diagnosis and treatment plan and the environment is it's just the same as you would have to editing or creating new archetypes and templates, except we're working with the task plans and work plans. Now, the addition here is the flow, which is a graphical representation of how the, how the tasks are put to, assembled in a work plan. And if I check the actual um, task plan and its flow, you can see that I can not just edit it and not just view it, but I can edit it. Let me switch to English. And let's say here where there's a decision uh, point, I can add a new decision branch and this decision branch can then have a defined action and I can modify the plans and store them in a graphic way, which gives, simplifies things a lot. Now, once this is compiled and exported, then upload it to the server. Um, let's check how this is presented in a cockpit. Now, for our user here, we see we're going to add this for our for our user here we're going to add a plan and this is the pneumonia diagnosis and treatment plan the one we just looked at and i'm going to materialize it and then assign a performer to it and activate it so this patient now has an active work plan and you see this is the plan we actually looked at earlier now this is the current step and i can see what's going on i can either cancel task open resources assign other to participants the most common thing is you open a form assigned to the to the task and then provide some data um no comment and say save form now as you see my our task now advances a step and once all the five initial steps are performed we reach the decision tree where depending on the rules we decide either we go into the medication treatment or we send patient back home and as you see everything is graphically supported and i'm quite proud of this uh, if there's our questions let's talk about it later for the moment now let's continue with the presentation uh, Clinical decision support. We do support GDL guides and the execution point is on the EHR server API. And let me demonstrate that. So first of all, I would need to uh, get a list of the guides present and you can see that it's empty. So I will provide a BMI categorization guide. So I upload it. And if I try to execute it on a specific patient, the result is empty because this patient doesn't have any data yet. I need to create a composition, you see. Uh, this composition contains a uh, height and weight for this specific patient. And once the data is stored, I can return back, execute a query, and we see that this patient has the BMI of 25.1. It's categorized as risk of being overweight. So that's how we can include our GDL or clinical decision support as being one step of the um, any task plan or other operations. Now, continuing with the asset management, you know, the archetypes and templates are uh, versions within the archetype designer itself, which can have a Git based repository or any other versioning system that you provide. And the archetypes additionally are managed in the CKM, the open air CKM, other CKMs, or your local. So, governance bit falls, we have some. Um, uh, best practices guidelines and we can share that with you so other type of assets might be digital forms uh, which are stored and versioned on our, our EHR server now all of the artifacts you create so all the operational templates file sets repositories or forms can be exported and imported by the tools in uh, handy zip archives or other formats and allow for easier transfer between the instances. Regarding the localization, all our, all our tools allow you to provide a translation files with the strings resources and our archetype designer, of course it includes English, besides that it has a Russian and German translation. It would be easy to add Swedish if that's needed and our tools such as Form Builder and AQL Editor allow you to do the same. The forms 
respond to so the contents respond to browser locale settings. The forms can also be fixed to a specific locale that you provide as a in, within the configuration. The forms can present content for specified locale if the translations are provided through the templates, but if if they are not, we can additionally provide templates on the form level. So more than enough options for you. Now let's see how the EHR server um, fits into an IG XDS setup. Uh, we do have a configuration that allows to act uh, the to allows EHR server to act as one of the repositories within the uh, IG XDS, XDS setup. And whenever you receive a document containing clinical data, once it's recognized, our handler takes over and stores the data in the server. So you have detailed clinical data at your disposal through the EHR server, but not through the IG XDS with the standard configuration. That's why we expanded it with something that we call an on-demand extension. And if you provide a resolver, which might be a script, a Java program, or other any other solution that can accept a request from the IG XDS when the document is requested, you can access the data from the EHR server, detailed data, provide a visualization of a sort and return it back to the document consumer, even without IG XDS having any idea what that document contains, but you have full access to the clinical details. Now, one, one of the topics were also device data capture. And we've played with that a lot on the Bluetooth level, where we would like to capture data directly from the devices with a single app that we control to store the data in the open air repository. Now, what, what we have is device handling frameworks for web browser and iOS. We have a data decoding framework for the incoming data that works on both platforms. And we have an iOS health kit rest ish wrapper, which allows us to uh, access health kit data on the mobile device through uh, some sort of a REST uh, request format. Now, instead of writing all of this code in Xcode on a Mac, uh, it would be enough to have an application that accepts the queries that are state that is stated down below. Now, the two parts are equal. So all of this code stores a BMI in health kit, but the same does this call of to our tool what we what kind of devices do we cover we cover well the majority of the devices that a household would uh, usually have and of course in the ios health kit we do support read write and subscribe to the data now there are two videos here which i'll show you a detailed use of what we can do and how we do it but i can i would gladly give you a live demo here and it's like this. Good morning. Hi, welcome. Uh, so here on the left, I have a browser uh, app. Uh, it runs in the browser. It doesn't rely on any other hardware. And I have a digital thermometer here with me. And you see, I'm starting the scanning for the Bluetooth devices. I switched on my thermometer, trying to do a measurement, which is of 36.3. And my device is now detected. I compare to it. It automatically connects, retrieves the data, and displays the data for me. You see, 36.3, no tricks played. And this is the data I got from the device itself. So your developers can access this and integrate it into the forms. Actually, these are our next steps. I don't have the finished demo with me, but I believe the proof of concept is more than enough for the moment being. Thanks for watching. Um, next step. Where are we? Let's see. All right, the AQL. So how do we access the data? We do have a tool called AQL Builder, which allows you to design the queries and manage server-side queries. Its main features are that you can build queries following on the templates, so you don't have to memorize or type by hand. And you can have access and IntelliSense help for the EHR composition version properties of the reference model. Now let's let's see it in action. Um, I log in. I'm going to log in to the studio here, which I mean to the Better Tools suite, um, and I'm going to start up our AQL builder. As you can, oh, let's reset this. Uh, let's see what's the internal state. What data do we already have? 
in our repository. So I would like to have, for each of the compositions, I would like to know which patient it belongs to. I would like to have the composition ID, so I can refer to it. And you see, all I'm doing is double clicking. All you see, I'm double clicking on the properties. And I would also like to see what template was used to verify this data. And if I run the query, you see I have three um, three compositions containing the demo data you sent for three patients. And these are the vital signs data that I entered a couple of, mo a couple of minutes ago for our GDL support. So th these are the contents. And as you saw, um, well, if I can retrieve some of the data uh, from the templates, I can just click on the template and say, well, show me the traumatic injury information and let me know which composition was that information stored in. As you can see, industrial trauma is stored in this composition. So I got the three compositions back that actually contain this data. Now, the, the tool itself allows you to, to store snippets to access server-side views. It has a full history, so uh, simplifies a lot access to the data. You can have detailed view, raw view. You can export data to an Excel and so on. Um, let's see what other things we can do with the AQL. Right, we can access the terminologies, the external terminologies, because we support terminology server-side function which allows us to execute external queries to the terminology server and then make it a part of the AQL query. So let's see this in action. And I have a query stored here for this kind of demonstration. Here it is. I'm accessing a terminology server. Let's see how this, how this works. Uh, you see, I'm trying to select to get back the composition ID and traumatic injury information, but filter only for those injury types that have a description of industrial trauma. Now I have to upload the, I have to upload the terminology to the server and the terminology is up with four entries and let's see what are the results. And here I have it, as you see, let's display this. So my return my returned information is the whole injury relate type related information. This is the composition it's stored in. And as you see, the code string matches the text I sent as a query. Uh, your question in the document was, can we do a SNOMED based query? We could, I don't have the infrastructure running at the time to apologize for that, but our architecture allows you to provide different connectors for different terminology providers. And we do have an IHT SDO SNOMED server here, and we do have a SNOMED query uh, connector. So I could actually do that. I was just, I just ran out of time. Of course, you can develop your own terminology adapters or connectors, and you have full capabilities through the accessing the terminologies through the API. What's next? AQL text search. So we, we do support like keyword, which is a light search function. We um, support question marks and asterisks. You can you understand what those means. Uh, let me just give you a short example. Again, I'm querying the pre-existing data and I'm searching for the sensor site for pulse measurement and the composition ID where the sensor site contains the word other. So I query that and you see the value was other finger and this is the composition the data is stored in. Now, what we also offer is that for some text fields with open text comments, let's say patient discharge summaries and so on, we do a full indexing of the content within the Lucene and we have a full text search capabilities with Lucene syntax for um, more complex queries. Of server side queries are these also the queries we saw now are all queries that reside and come originate from the client. But we also have server side queries. That's easier to manage. There you have more control over what's going on. We call them views, but they are not static since they can accept parameters. And let me show you one of the views. So I've created a view. I'm I'm joining now, I'm uh, opening my dashboard and if we can see, I have a test view here, which contains your que the query you sent. 
And if I execute this query, let's, so let's see the view part. So get data from injury view. So this is my test view and I click on it. I get three entries where I get the diagnosis, description, location, pulse, and the EHR ID. Um, now, what else can I do? As you see, I can send parameters across and I can include parameters in my view. I could say, well, hits, I can accept the parameter hits. The parameter is um, declared because we have number, we support numbers, dates, arrays, strings, uh, different transformations. And if I save this view and execute it again, where the problem, well, I can do this and get only, as you see now, two hits back. So I'm limiting the number of the hits in the result set. But what happens if I don't send any hits? There's a problem because I have a variable in the query, but I don't have the value provided. Um, I have a couple, a couple of options and my flexibility here is I can remove this hard-coded entry and I can introduce conditionals. So if my variables contain hits, please add this line as a part of the query. And once I save this view, you're gonna see without hits, it works, it returns everything. If you have hits, it abides by the parameter value. There you go. And next forms. All right, the most interesting part of the presentation, I guess. Also, I'm running a couple of minutes late, but no more than a couple. The forms are based on open air models. All their field va labels, values, descriptions are provided from within the template, but they can be customized on the forms level. Data matches the field types, restriction information is there. And the benefits we have is that you don't need to design everything. Our tool does, it designs the form fields according to their data types. Labels, value list are there, localization is included. You can add your own localization. You can modify the values. We have instant validation on the client side. Now the output of the form tools is the actual composition. So you can grab that and store it on the server or we can do that for you. Now the, sent the, font for the forms are managed on the EHR server, which allows you for the fast forms management, deploy and controlled access. We have two tools to deal with the forms. One is the form builder, which allows you to, it's a low code environment for form designing. And the other one is form renderer, which you can include as a bundle, JavaScript bundle in your solution. And uh, it can consume the form, form description that's stored on the server. And that's how you get forms in your application. Now, they are both uh, progressive web apps, uh, which loads into your uh, browser. They do not have a backend. They connect to your EHR server instance. We do not have access to your data, even though you can load them from the URL down I'm, I'm showing here on the slide. But the forms are stored on the better platform. So in the EHR server, not as HTML code, but in a form description meta language, which you can consume then with the form renderer which is an Angular module, or you can see it as a JavaScript bundle. And now I believe it's demo time. Okay, so back to the our tools suite, and I have here a form builder part. Now, my form builder part, I have two templates preloaded. Pre-procurement demo is the one you provided. It's unchanged as you sent it. And our tool, as you see here, has three main panels. On the left is your model, into the in the begin in the middle there is the canvas where we design the form and to the right are the properties uh, the property panels now the easiest thing to do would be just to drag and drop the complete model onto the canvas and here it is the first instance here it is the first instance of the form itself now this is the form at the design time when we click the preview, we go to the playground where we actually render the form and we can play with it and we can see the underlying model. And so this is the actual uh, rendition of the form. Now let's make it a bit nicer. We do not need the context, so we click it out. We don't need the whole form wrapper, so we remove it just by a single click. Let's clean this form a bit, make it a bit more compact and what we do here, what we have here is, I can just demonstrate you, we have full layouting capabilities. You can have then, you can have multiple um, um, columns, multiple rows, 
and you just drag and drop your um, form elements around all that's stored and then used for the form rendition. Um, now, let's preview this form. As you can see, some of the blocks, some of the containers can have multiple instances. How many? Which ones? All of that is defined by the actual template. How many can you accommodate? And for instance, the multi multimedia resource can, is optional, so it can have zero instances or 100. Let's make that one and see what changes. You see, the controls are now removed. We can't replicate this part of the form anymore. Um, let's continue. Traumatic injury. This field should have a couple of values here from which you can pre-select. Since the data source is external, we have two options. I, one of them is to provide uh, the values here. And so I'm going to do the injury one and injury two. Now, all of a sudden, I have two options to click. And injury two, oh, I see there's a typo in here. Let's fix this. And in the preview part, again, as you see now, I have values at my disposal. Now, one other thing I mentioned earlier is localization. This template was also has a Swedish language enabled. So let me switch the language here and you see the complete form is now in Sweden, in Swedish. Uh, all the values included, well, of course, all the values except for the injury because we provided none in Swedish localization. So customized localization, sorry, down here. Swedish, I do the Swedish one and the Swedish two. So click Swedish two. And at, as you can see now, we have direct uh, switch to the values provided. So I'm adding localization at the form level. Next thing, let's make our forms nicer. How can we do that? Besides dealing with the fields that are part of our model, we can also deal with the blocks that are um, additionally added to the form to make form nicer or to uh, include additional, let's say, instructions. So this label here, I'm going to just say, well, attach images, and it's going to be a helper text. What else? I can provide, I can add images. So my image here, I'm going to I'm gonna add a logo and let's make it a bit smaller. It can stick to the left. Let's hide the label. And next moment, our form looks nicer. We have a logo up here. We have some in, in, uh, instructions in here. And you can add all sorts of things, uh, spacers, grouping, images, or any other generic um, elements that you might help you uh, design the form for to fit its actual purpose. Now, let's get back. The time's pressing. Uh, down at the very bottom, we have a new uh, score calculation. And you can see with the four fields, uh, depending on what you select, you expect to actually calculate a score and then assess the clinical risk category. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could do this automatically? I don't want to have users calculate scores manually, so I'm blocking this um, filled in, and I'm going to lock this one too because I will calculate this automatically. Now, what do I want to do? First of all, allow me to create a different presentation for this data, for this field. And I have a couple of options. I can do the radio buttons, I can do the button groups, so for easier access, and you can have also overview of what you're looking at. Now, in the parentheses, there are scores assigned to the options, and I don't like for the patients to see this course because then they might influence the decision and they might not be that honest who knows so i'm i'm hiding those and next thing since i will attach some logic to this part of the form i would like to have um i would like to have um attach some um, script to it so we have scripting capabilities and let me show you in a moment what i've been doing i've tagged four fields with a news tag, as you can see here. And I'm going to add some script to our total score uh, field. I have the script predefined here because I'm running 
short on time. Let me just explain what I've done. So we have a scripting environment which supports uh, pure JavaScript and you have an API exposed here with IntelliSense helping you within the editor, gives you access to full form elements, underlying data, and I believe we're covering the majority of operations you wanna do. Now let me explain what I'm doing. So I'm adding a listener to the fields mark, marked with news, and each time any of them change, I do calculate, I do sum the scores of them all together, and I do populate the total score with the value. Let's see this in action. So down below, starting, our score is zero. Now it's plus three, now it's five, plus seven, and now it's nine. So we've achieved the automatic calculation of the new score. And what we need to do next is uh, provide a risk, cl a clinical risk category. And I'm gonna do this in a different way because not everybody's a programmer, not everybody's familiar with JavaScript, but what I'm gonna do is click point and click. So, and I'm gonna create a condition if total score is less or equal than three, then the risk field, <clears throat> I set its code to the uh, actual value of low. And this is one condition. Let me add another one. Uh, again, I say if total score value is above three, then the risk field here, I'm gonna set its code to the value of um, low, medium. Now I would need to enter four four conditions to cover all four um, all four values, but let's see them in action. It will be good enough. So zero, low, three, low, five, low, medium. As you can see, no coding required. I've just added some logic to the form. You actually asked if I could add other types of logic and uh, regarding the regularity of the heartbeat. So Irregular type, let's hide this by default so the field now is marked as hidden. And again, for regularity, if I want to um, show the irregular type, um, ah, I do apologize, I'm going too fast. If the regular regularity code is not empty, then, uh, of course, and, and regular code uh, equals regular, then irregular type is shown. Otherwise, let's say irregular is hidden. Let's see it in action. And here we are down below. There's no irregular field, regular. So, oh, I, I'm, I'm sweet. I, I defined the wrong, the wrong value. It should have been the other way around. I'm going too fast. But you see what I've achieved with this. The next question was, we have two sets of uh, pulse of the inspired oxygen section, one in the respiration, one in the pulse oximetry. And what I can do here is, again, I can add a dependency when I say that if flow rate, the first one, a magnitude is not empty, then, the flow rate on the respiration part is set, its magnitude is set to an expression of the field flow rate, first part, and the magnitude is here. So all I've said is, what I've said here is, if there's a flow rate in the uh, pulse oximetry, copy its value to the flow rate in the respiration. And let's see this in action. So flow rate up here, flow rate down there, 12, 12 is copied. And the model here has both values. So what we can do now in the respiration part, what we can do is inspired oxygen, mark it as hidden. We don't see it on the form, but it contains the data. All right, um, give me a couple of, do I have a couple of minutes, two or three more? Because I'm 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 coming to an end. Encompass yeah. with a technical error. A bit. Thanks a lot. So the, tech, the traumatic injury, these values are nonsense now. So I would like to do something meaningful. So let's get into the content part, and I'm removing these options. I would like to link this traumatic injury field to a terminology. What I need here is 
or well, I need to set up the form environment to a terminology tell it where the terminology server resides in, and for the for the field part, I'm just gonna name the terminology. So my terminology is injury type, the one I uploaded earlier for our AQL terminology um, demo, and let's see. I have four entries in here. So I've just linked to an external data source. And whatever I click, you see here, I have SNOMED code directly in my data model. And of course, I can do the same also now for the body site. And so code system is body site, but I need to take care of body site being present. So I'm uploading this contents. Contents look like this. So I have code, I have a SNOMED code, uh, ID, and the values and there are multiple languages so for the body site i can add a language parameter uh, this is the wrong name uh, fast fingers language and i want the language to be swedish so whenever i load my data i see sv prefix because i don't speak sweden i do apologize this is how you can detect the change um, one of the last uh, things to show you now is how do we treat multimedia? Of course, again, multimedia doesn't reside within the, within the composition. Usually you store it in an external source and just link it with a URI. So I will provide such a resource store, external resource store. And let's see, when I click on a multimedia field, I can, uh, ah, of course, the, let me, let me, I was playing around with the with the. Um, so let's store this form because I need to test form. I need to just to clear the cache. <sighs> Too much testing. Um, all right, clear data, and this should solve the problem when I reload my environment. So I'll be back in a moment. Um, Airscape login form builder i have a couple of forms my test form i'm just continuing where i left off let me see okay and i have set up the upload so the server yes there it is and let's see it in practice drop here so my knee image is uploaded and do the left knee and my model as you can see contains the uh, description but it also contains the URL which, where this image is stored. And I can uh, check that by simply loading it into a server. So you see the resources is um, stored somewhere else. Now, um, maybe, okay, um, I'll be done in a minute. Let me just show you another functionality. Within the form builder, I have a form features form just to show you what we are playing with and what to expect in the future. I have a data set here on the form and wouldn't it be nice if I could present it in some other way than pure numbers or if you could load data, the data from the repository, how can I visualize it? That's where my our widgets or other components can kick in and I'm going to name this component chart and I have a predefined script here which takes the data from the form and feeds it to the chart elements like this. There's the data, there's the labels. Let's see it in action. As you see, 10, 5, 8, 2, and it's live. I do 7 here, I do 12 there, and my charts updates live. Uh, what else is to mention? Uh, ability of bringing in variables or data from the platform. Let me show you how. I'm going to bring in the height information for for a, for a patient, and I would need to do. I, I'm going to do this by executing an AQL, and I get my AQL editor here, so I can use my template for what I done earlier. Double click body height and length. I need a single one. Get back to the editor as you see my query is transferred to this side, and I save the variable. Next thing I need to do is load the data. So I'm going to add a button to my form and add a new activity. So when my button here is clicked, I want to set the body height value magnitude to a variable, which is height and its property height. 
uh, if everything is in order, when I preview this form, I click on the button and I get 193 from the repository. It's the data point we entered earlier uh, with this composition. So this is the data. Uh, stop me. Stop me when you think the time, the time ran out. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep showing you the features. But I believe by now I, I've answered most of the questions. Uh, what I could do is just show you here how we can also bring in custom images into the design. So I can add an interactive image to a field where you can choose from values. And my field, let's say, is a boy or a girl. I need to choose gender. And all I have to include here is a sort of a pure HTML code which is provided by some t online tools such as image map tool where you just um, upload an image let's say like this and then you define the hotspots and I, what i did is i defined a circle hotspot here for a girl and i'm going to define a new hotspot in a circular shape for a boy and as you can see show me the code this is the thing that i just copied in our tool and let's see how our tool does with this. So girl, I'm going to bind it to a female. Boy, I'm going to bind it to male. And when I preview, my form suddenly has an image with hotspots I can click. And of course, that represents my selection. Um, I, di I, didn't have, I didn't have time now to enter the fourth set of data, but I believe You've yeah. seen. Uh, we, we could do that in the second part if we really need to, but you probably, you probably want more time uh, for this is the recorded part that could be interesting for others to view. So it might be clever to go on to the rest of the presentations you have. Um, okay, so but the rest of the presentation um, are two more specific features. Uh, okay, let me show you. You know what we're going to do? Um, we'll continue with the form we started with earlier. So the test form we stored somewhere in between. And I will uh, show you the, the canvas capabilities. So what is the canvas is a generic field which, we, which will be linked to a multimedia field. And it also needs to have an upload, so a resource store available. Um, now, this can be also set up through a generic uh, config for the form. But now I'm doing this on the field uh, level. You can, you can have different fields accessing different servers. The purpose of this field is I can, that I can, let's say, upload some image. And here I'm working with our knee image. But more than that, it allows me to add some markup. You see, now I can start drawing and say, well, this is the point of this is the point of um, focus. Please check this. I see something wrong here. And when I confirm this, uh, now this image should is stored. Well, I, well, when I store this um, composition, this image is then stored on the on the resource store as it is marked up with all these red. Uh, with all these red um, drawings on it. So this is a powerful tool which allows you not just to load the media, but also to mark it up. That's one important feature. But while we're at it, let me also show you how difficult would it be to include such a form in your application. I believe this is the question we didn't answer till now. So I have here everything you need for the form renderer part. For instance, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, let's, let's open up this file. As you see, form renderer my app full. I'm loading the form from the, from the server. So you see, this is the form that we actually coded and you can see it's live. Oh, no, no, this, this one was pre-prepared. Uh, let, let me, let me do it again. So we, it doesn't seem like I'm, I'm, I'm cheating. Let's use our form, test form was the one we stored and I reload the form typo there with the four yeah thanks the, and I was already wondering why it doesn't load uh, you spared half a minute on me and you see the, the image is loaded from the server all right the image the form image part it doesn't render because I'm using a local bundle um, 
the form renderer JavaScript bundle, which is not synced with the latest state. I do apologize for that. But otherwise, in the browser, you, you would see a nice image here. But the rest of the form, uh, as you see, is, um, is uh, functioning as it's supposed to be with all of the parameters, everything included. Um, and of course, down below, we have only two options covering for the news scale. Uh, so let's check now the code just to give you an update. Nothing specific. I'm loading jQuery and I'm loading the bootstrap. And here's the vital part. I'm loading the form renderer JavaScript bundle. Nothing else. In the presentation part, well, I don't see, it. I don't need this. I have my, well, my grid, my save button, and this is where form is rendered within this element. All I need to do is configure it. How do I configure it? When the page is ready, I well, this is optional for saving. Otherwise, I do define which form I want to load, which specific version if I want to. If I do not define this, it takes the latest one. I tell I tell where my ref, my platform resides. I give some credentials. I tell it which language to use, and then I I bind all of this data to my form renderer element, which is the element I have down here. Now, this is the code that actually handles the submit part when you click the save button. But all in all, imagine this a uh, hundred lines of code, which most of it are boilerplate to actually have full form functionality. Now, let's check it out. My configuration said I need an English form. I just fix the Swedish language, reload, and here we are. Everything's in Swedish. Also, also the values from the terminology. I think we have to wrap it up now, uh, Anders, yes. and thank you. Uh, I, I, I believe, and we all understand, we can we can do this all weekend. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm do you have at, something that, 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 that as a last bullet? Uh, yes, I do. Behind, besides the demo part, I, of course, this is one of our models, better data, better care. Uh, we follow it closely, and I believe everybody should pay a lot of attention to the medical data. But in any case, thank you for your consideration. Thank you for giving me the opportunity of presenting our system. If you have further questions, please uh, contact us at the email shown below. So support at better.care. And we will be glad to talk to you and solve any questions or dilemmas you might have. So thank you again to all of you. Thank you very much.